promptly at 12.30. So, obviously, we're going to be here worshiping. All right. And so, we're going to endeavor with all our might to hold to what we try to do all the time, but we just don't get it. It is a 90-minute service. So, we're going to start right at 11. We don't, we don't have no problem with that start time. Is that end of time. Yeah. I don't know, the, the preacher just can't get it right. <laughs> and and I'll be, I gotta tell you, I'll be feeling kind of mad because whenever we bring the guest preacher in, most of them, like, man, they right at, at 12 30, y'all walking out the door. And I'm like, dog, no, 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 I gotta figure that out. <laughs> so, uh, but what we wanna do is uh, be as prompt uh, and expeditious in the worship experience without just rushing, because the Holy Spirit can Amen. interrupt the program anytime you want to. Amen. Amen. But they will be leaving, so uh, just so you guys know, is, is as soon as we end, they'll probably be walking out the door, so uh, they'll definitely be soliciting your prayers for safe travel, and that they uh, go there and represent God and Macedonia very, very well. Amen. Amen. Um, that is the fifth Sunday stuff. That's the... Uh, Oh, and, and make sure you guys are getting ready for our church anniversary. Our church anniversary yeah. is the third Sunday in October. Yeah. Third Sunday in October, uh, 3.30 p.m., one of the rare occasions we have an evening service. Yeah. Yeah. And so since we only have an evening service literally like two or three times a year, the house ought to be full with Macedonian yeah. 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 for this 90th yeah. church anniversary. Yeah. And so, yeah. praise God. Yeah. And we do ask each family, if you don't mind giving $90 to the cause yeah. as an offering. Yeah. Above and beyond your other offering. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm <laughs> Y'all be tricking us. I don't really know how to take that. I've been looking for feedback. No problem. If I feel like, amen, I'm like, okay, y'all get that. And then y'all get quiet. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, y'all. Yeah, I don't know what that means. 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 Now, I praise God. Thank you, sister. Thank you. I missed you something too. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, uh, they're trying to process it, but you've been doing this all year. Yes, sir. So guess what? So I'm going to get to your processing to get started because uh, the third Sunday, we're asking each family to give uh, 90 bucks uh, toward the church anniversary offering efforts. But guess what? You can start processing 2019. Amen. Because Amen. the third Sunday in October 2019, we're going to ask you for 91. Yes, so I'm giving you an extra month or so to start processing that one. <laughs> but that helps you out. Helps you. All right. All right. So, anyway, let's, uh, you know what? What we haven't done in a while, uh, we're coming, this is the, the final Wednesday of our fast. Now I already know most of y'all broke up fast Sunday Saturday. I already know it. We've been fasting for a whole month. I want to report out to everybody, I'm still fasting. Well, you know that. Successfully went to the Festival of the Forks. Uh -huh. Ate a lot of corn. But I didn't eat no meats. I didn't eat anything that violated that fast. Ate a lot of corn. All right. That was it. I already know some people took a little break off the fast Saturday. But I was just hoping you got back on like quickly on Sunday morning. But the fast is officially over at 6 p.m. on this Sunday. 6 p.m. this Sunday. And so it was a fast for health and healing. And uh, you had your little, little scriptures and all that stuff. And I bet you most of y'all don't know where that. But anyway, uh, I need to hear some testimonies. I need to hear some testimonies. And it don't have to be health and healing, but uh, I'm believing that God has done something extra special in the month of September. Now, September has been pretty amazing because whether you know it or not, uh, we've had 
in August, we had like five members of our church go to the hospital on the same day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They was at the same hospital, well, four of them was at the same hospital, I believe, yes, for different things. Yes, and so, but I haven't heard anything like that. We still got some members of the sick, but I haven't heard anything like that because when we fast and pray, <coughs> it works. Yeah, right. So, any testimonies, it don't have to be healthy healing. Just what has God been doing for you? Anyone has a testimony? Over there, Pat. I have a testimony. I went to the doctor about two weeks ago. I had a situation. Okay. Amen. 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 Let, me, let me help y'all out. Okay. Since y'all sitting to my side right here, I ain't leaving y'all got to say something because I'm going to be like, I'll be standing up and holding your hand up now. I don't know what's going on. That's behind me. Yeah. Alright. Any others? Yes, go ahead. So I don't go to the church, I didn't know about your past, but I've been fasting on um, social media because I wanted to really hear from God and not from outside sources. Through that, I think I've seen God um, really move in my life and show me that I did not know for Jeremiah 33 3, where he's like, you know what, you need to do this, you need to stand still, you need to move, you don't need to move. And through it, he has really shown me that even through um, hard times that he has been very present. So he's given me peace, which to me surpasses all understanding. And then on top of it, um, went to the doctor. They thought they were going to do surgery on my neck and find out no surgery necessary. Yeah. 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 Again, for those who know, during that same fashion period, my husband, they thought he had lung cancer. He didn't have lung cancer. Yeah. Yeah.
We've got to repeat this over and over and over so we can have peace. And I ask you to pray for her son. He's in the hospital in intensive care with the heart issues. So. Amen. 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 I'm going to fast because I can't afford to. I can't afford to fast. When I was here and had that medical. Oh, okay. Since okay. Then, yep, yep, yep. Since then, I'm doing what my doctors told me to do. I've lost 25 pounds. So if I fast, my clothes don't fit me as they are now. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't afford to fast. <laughs> Just, I know if you pray and if you listen to your doctor and you do what you're supposed to do, things will. You know, the last doctor report I got, everything is back to the Amen. North. Amen. 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 Yes, ma'am. I just want to tell you know, uh, uh, you know, in my family, I went back to my oldest daughter, had a nervous breakdown mm -hmm. several years ago, quite a few years ago. And my sister and I decided that we would fast. Mm -hmm. We started in the morning, we said a certain time we would not eat anything until that time. Mm -hmm. And I knew God heard our prayer and it worked well. Yes, ma'am. Fast and works. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Oh. Um, that that's, that's it, right? I do want to go back to Brother Kevin real quick because um, Brother Kevin came to Macedonia earlier this year. And the day that he was actually thinking about joining Macedonia, the next thing we know, he is passed out <coughs> in the foyer. Yes, and then the next thing we know, we got the medical professionals carrying him out on a gurney. And on his way out, he hands the ushers his time. Hey! hey. <laughs> and then he came back on his feet and um, joined and, and definitely has been faithful. He's working now, that's why he can't be here. Uh, as he explained to me, you know, when you start a new job and you're the lowest man on the totem pole, you have to take what they give you. And he's working his way up, and we believe God is going to deliver him to a schedule that allows him to be back here with us on a regular basis. So, um, but when we talk about healing, and I'm looking at Kevin, because like I said, I remember it's still in my mind. I remember hearing him fall. I remember when he went down there. There was a whole team of folks that went out there to help him. But that was so long ago now that most of us forgot that. But God is still a healer. He is still a healer. And so we heard about a neck. We've heard about hearts, we've heard about uh, feet, and all of this stuff, but I still know that we just prayed in Matthew 9 and 35. Yeah. It says we went through all the cities and villages, yeah. teaching in their synagogues, and healing all, all, not some, all sicknesses and diseases. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so he's healing in Mississippi. Yeah. He's healing in Michigan. Yeah. And wherever else there needs to be a healer, there's he's healing in California, wherever it is, because he's an omnipresent God. Yeah. He's an omnipresent, he's omniscient. Yeah. He knows everything. Yeah. And he's all powerful. Yeah. 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 So a hand on you. Oh, praise God. Praise God. All right. Let's see. Interesting. We got a few more people in the house. Let's get ready to do a little Bible study. I love some help. Look at that. 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 Look if you are sitting where you want to sit, that's cool. And if you want to move, this is your time to get in a comfortable spot. Um, tonight, we're going to do something a little different than what we've been doing, but kind of the same vein. Uh, tonight, we're starting a new uh, teaching series that actually is kind of sort of the connecting piece 
of the last teaching series. Amen. So tonight we're starting a teaching series called Kingdom Marriage. Amen. So let me just prompt and say some things because some of you uh, who are not married and ain't trying to get married may be wondering, like, why am I here to hear about marriage? Two things I would encourage you. I would always encourage you. Anytime you show up in the house of the Lord, yeah. sir, and whatever God is talking about that day, yeah. He's giving it to you for a reason. Even if you don't think you know it. You may not feel like you need it, but you have no idea what you're going to need. Because for those of you who are not married, and are not trying to get married, but you know some people uh -huh. who are married yeah. who need some advice. Yeah. You can come get a quick so uh -huh. you don't know when to tell them. Yeah. 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 It's a shame when someone who needs help comes to someone in the body of Christ and that person can't help. Yeah. 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 So don't reject it even though you think this don't apply to me. Because you really don't know what applies to you. The second thing, now I'm talking strictly from my pastoring position now. The second thing is that we should not be so selfish. To only come to church to get something for us. Come and get something for somebody, somebody else. else. Yeah. 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 And when you get something for someone uh -huh. else, and you are a blessing to someone uh -huh. else, yes, that's when you'll get blessed. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 So tonight we're going to start this thing called Kingdom Marriage. To all the singles who just heard. <laughs> Heard something in that series called What is the single yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't feel like you're on the sideline with this one because it definitely gonna focus on the married people. But this is still gonna help you. Amen. 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 It's still gonna help you. And so tonight we're going to do our introduction. This is just our introduction to kingdom marriage. Uh, go with me. Let's, let's hit a few scriptures. Uh, we're going to read all those scriptures. But go with me. Uh, someone get me Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 26 through 28. That's going to be kind of where we uh, do most of our teaching from. Uh, we're going to hit, uh, we can go ahead and hit Matthew chapter 1. Verse 1 through 12, that's for the reading tonight. We'll, we'll do those as our foundational. And somewhere in there over the course of this lesson or a lesson coming near you, you will grab those other scriptures too. But Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. Can someone read that for me, please? And God said, God said, Let us make man in our image mm -hmm. after our likeness. Mm -hmm. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. and over the fowl of the air, mm -hmm. and over the cattle, and over all of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. 27. So God created man in his own image. <coughs> in the image of God created he him. Yes. Male yes. and female created he them. Mm -hmm. 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Sweet Lord Jesus. Sweet Lord Jesus. Sweet Lord Jesus. I think y'all ready for this one. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 19, starting at verse 1. Now it came to pass when yeah. Jesus had finished these things, oh, that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea, mm -hmm. beyond the Jordan. Mm -hmm. And great multitudes followed him and healed them there. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, and saying to him, 
Is it lawful? Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife Lord have mercy. for just any reason? For any reason. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said to them, What is that? Have you not read, you read that read he, he who uh -huh. made them at the beginning uh -huh. made them male and female? Uh -huh. And said, for this, for this reason, a man shall leave his father uh -huh. and his mother and, his mother. and be joined to his wife, uh -huh. and the two shall become one flesh. One flesh. So then they were no longer two, but one. The Lord have mercy. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. We're going to stop it right there. That's good right there. <laughs> <laughs> Focus to this new teaching series called Kingdom Marriage. Contrary to popular opinion, uh -huh. the last series was not simply to deter anyone uh -huh. from <laughs> leaving being single too soon, but it was also to help singles that are truly righteously single and that are destined to be married to be ready for a kingdom marriage. Yeah. Listen, we wasn't just trying to get you not to get married, uh -huh. even though it's kind of sounded like that. Yes, yeah. We wasn't really just trying to stop you from like wanting to have that desire to be a husband or a wife. But what we do want to do, those of us who are married, we know how serious marriage is. Yeah. And we also know that it's a different thing in the marriage than it is in the wedding. Yeah. 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 Weddings, although they can be stressful, usually are very pretty. Uh -huh. The pageantry. Uh -huh. Most of the time at a wedding, you only hear the groom and the bride say nice things to each other. <laughs> Most of the time. Most of the time, yeah. even if the families don't get together, most of the time, they ain't going to show it right. all of it that day. Right. 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 But the marriage That's is a whole yeah. different thing. Yeah. And so we wanted to make sure uh -huh. that you were sure that you wanted to get married. Yeah. Yeah. And if you came out of the Righteously Single series uh -huh. still having that burn and that desire, I really want to be a wife or I really want to be a husband, listen, ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with that. But now we need to help you as a righteous single set you up for a kingdom marriage. All right. All right. All right. All right. So this teaching series will help the righteously single and those of us who are married to be encouraged. Uh -huh. If you're already married, it's going to help you be encouraged. Uh -huh. and if you're really ready to be to have a kingdom marriage. Yeah. It will also help those of us who may be married uh -huh. and our marriages are falling short uh -huh. of the kingdom standard uh -huh. that God is looking for to keep grinding at this thing called marriage uh -huh. until our marriage becomes a kingdom marriage. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we already read it. God, Jesus said, he said, you know what? A man shall leave father and mother, yeah. mm -hmm. cleave yeah. to his wife, yeah. and the two shall become yeah. one flesh. Yeah. Then he said, what God has joined together, yeah. let not man put a son. Yeah. He says, a man shall leave father and mother, yeah. cleave unto his wife, mm -hmm. and the two shall become wow. one flesh. Mm -hmm. Three-point sermon, minister. Uh, Shonette Spicer, right in that same scripture, there's a leaving. Uh -huh. Man shall leave father and mother. Uh -huh. You have a kingdom marriage. Uh -huh. Leave father and mother. Uh -huh. Cleave unto your wife. Uh -huh. So there's a cleaving. Uh -huh. Cleave to your wife. Uh -huh. Now everybody else is cool. Uh -huh. But she has to be number one. Uh -huh. And there can't be no number two. Uh -huh. So there's a leaving there's a cleaving, 
And it says, and they shall become one flesh. There's a, cle a, le a leaving, a cleaving, and a weaving. Y'all oh, <laughs> remember back in the day, y'all remember back in the day when, when Mama Nels used to have the quilting parties. They come together and put together these gigantic quilts. And back in the day, see, they make them pretty quilts now. But back in the day, they took the hand-me-downs that was actually too worn to be worn again. They done had patches on top of patches on top of patches. And then they would make actually little blocks of quilting blocks. And they would weave those things together to the point that that thing would come together and it makes something completely different than what it was. And so that's really what a marriage is. It's a leaving, it's a cleaving, and it's a weaving. If there is no weaving, there really is no need for no leaving and cleaving. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Many wow. times, singles just want to clean. But if you ain't gonna weave with your clean, uh -huh. don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> so much this, so much this. On your hand out. We will be teaching from primarily two sources for this year. Of course, we're going to teach from the Bible. But the other source, we're actually teaching from a book called Kingdom Marriage by Dr. Tony Evans. Dr. Tony Evans, he said this. This is a quote from the book. It says, It was clear in the establishment of marriage that God wanted the institution sovereignly under his control and existing for his purpose. Amen. Amen. Thus, it was God who created man. It was God who communicated to man his word. It was God who revealed the need in man for a woman. It was God who created the woman from the man. It was God who brought the woman to the man. So it is clear God's intent is that we, he never be left out of a marriage, right. but rather be the definition of the marriage. Right. Yeah. A kingdom marriage is a God-defined, God-purposed, God-driven marriage. So let me remind the married people. Yeah. We said if you already got a kingdom marriage, we just want to encourage you to right. keep on keeping it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But for the rest of us, where our marriage is falling short of kingdom standards, yeah. this is going to help us bring our marriage up to be a kingdom marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So watch this. Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary defines marriage as this. Defined as the institution whereby men and women are joined in a special kind of social and legal dependence for the purpose of founding and maintaining a family. That's what he said. Yeah. Or they said. <laughs> We're looking at a kingdom marriage, though. Yeah. Right. And a kingdom marriage is a, a covenantal marriage. Covenant, covenantal marriage. Which means, let me stop right there. A covenant actually cannot be broken except something dies. <laughs> because a covenant is actually made with something dying. <laughs> Jesus made a covenant with the church. And he sealed the covenant with his blood. And so, a kingdom marriage is a covenant marriage. It's a covenant, and the only way to get out of it, somebody got to die. Don't try to kill nobody. <laughs> Yes. 
And so, it's a covenant union between a man and a woman, watch this, who commits themselves to function in unison under divine authority in order to replicate God's image and expand his rule in the world through both their individual and joint calling. I'm going to explain it. It's a covenant union between a man and a woman who commits themselves to function in unison. Because remember, as a single, you are functioning as a sole individual for the purpose of God. But now, you've got to actually function in unison. This is a religious thing. You gotta function in unison. Mm -hmm. Two saved people yeah. mm -hmm. who are coming together to actually function like they want. Mm -hmm. Which means she saved, I'm saved. Uh -huh. She started walking off, but she can't walk so fast. <laughs> Because she got to be in unison with me so that we can actually show the image of God for Him. That's what makes marriage different. You don't just get you to do what you want to do no more. And it says for the individual and joint call. This is why kingdom marriages are so much different than just regular marriages because a kingdom couple understands that a kingdom marriage is a calling, a ministry, and a position. A wife is a person and a position and a calling and a ministry. Oh Lord, have mercy. Come on, come on. Now y'all just thought, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm wife now, so I gotta make sure that everything's cool at the house and get these kids up out of here and make sure you know if you don't go outside with no uh, mismatched shoes on and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. it, it is a calling. It is a ministry, and it's a person. So, you don't want to rush up in this marriage thing. And those of us who are already in it, we need to make sure we're taking it very serious. Amen. Husband is a person, it's a position, it's a ministry, and it's a calling. Ah, let me tell you why I know it's a calling. Because we're going to show in Scripture, watch this. Adam didn't know he needed a wife. So God laid him down and called Eve out of him. Then called him to wake up. Then called him to come together. It's a person. It's a position, uh -huh. it's a ministry, and a call, all at the same time. And we have to actually walk this thing together. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen this movie, but most of you probably have. Uh, Pacific Rim. Y'all remember that movie? There's a movie called Pacific Rim. And I won't get into all the details, but what I do can tell you about, that was these gigantic thing, monsters or whatever that was coming by the sea and was attacking the city. And in order to fight the monsters, they created this like gigantic robot. Yes, sir. But the thing was so big that it took two people on the inside of it working exactly together Amen. to actually move the thing. Wow. Amen. Wow. 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 So watch this. The robot couldn't move 
unless two people uh-huh. was moving at the exact same time. Oh, yes, sir. Uh-huh. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Moving the exact same way. Uh-huh. Wow. wow. And it, it, it is hard. But I'm going to show you how to make it happen. So I transition as we introduce this series, please keep as a fundamental principle. God wants marriages to reflect his image, have his influence, and to carry out his instructions. So tonight let's explore three fundamental principles of marriage. Uh, Principle or point number one. Everything's going to be coming primarily out of Genesis chapter one if you're already there. We need to have Kingdom image. Kingdom image. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Um, verse number 26 and 27 of chapter 1 of Genesis. It said that God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, created he him, male and female, created he them. If you're going to have a kingdom marriage, now this is, remember now this is all introduction, we're going to go into some stuff. This is introduction. A kingdom marriage has to have a kingdom image. Yeah. Um, God said, let us make man in our image. So watch this. Um, that was the full triune God yep. at the beginning of the first marriage. Amen. Wow. Wow. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All right. He said, let us make man in our image. <coughs> so a wife can't be uh, looking different than God, even if she's mad with her husband. She can't get so much in her feelings that she starts to look different than God Himself. And watch this. It has to, she has to look like. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Which means her inside, Holy Spirit, has to look like Him. Her outside, God the Son, has to be carrying herself like Him. How she thinking, how she operates, has to look like God the Father. Every single thing she do. And husband, in everything you do, in everything we do, we have to look like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have to look like the full Godhead body. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and watch this. God uh-huh. always gets along with himself. So whenever there is confusion, somebody is not looking like the image that they're supposed to look like. <laughs> We are to actually be a reflection of God in our marriage, both the male and the female. So that's what I love. It says he made both of them in his image, male and female. We are to reflect the full Godhead bodily. And watch this. The way we actually do it is that every kingdom marriage also has three parts. Mm-hmm. Please don't. Ah. <laughs> a kingdom husband mm-hmm. and a kingdom wife yeah. is not in a kingdom marriage by themselves. Right. 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 
Watch this. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Verse 9 through 12.
God has a wife. Mm -hmm. His wife is Israel. All right. Jesus has a wife. His wife is the church. God the Father was married to Israel. Jesus is married to the church. Y'all feeling me? Mm -hmm. God is saying to Israel, he says, y'all done forgot something. And he's saying this to us today. He says, I was a witness in your marriage. Which means God himself was a witness at your wedding. And he has been watching your marriage. See, all the guests that was at your wedding, they weren't the only ones. God himself was a witness at your wedding. And he heard us take all those vows. Oh, yeah. yes, and he's watching over the vows okay. to see, okay, what you do with the vows. Yeah, yeah. And those words, because they were, he was a witness there, he actually also can testify against you, yeah. even in the court of law. Because he was a witness to the crime that most of us committed. Y'all so quiet. So he says, I'm a witness of you and your little wife. That's what he said. Your youth, your little wife. And then he stayed, he stayed a witness through your whole marriage. He's a witness because I already told you it ain't two people in that marriage. It's three. Amen. Every good marriage, every kingdom marriage, there's three people. The husband, the wife, and God. He is ensuring that you have a kingdom image by being in the marriage with you. Listen, uh, y'all know folks that have been married a long time they start favoring. Yeah. 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 So he said, I'm going to be in this with you so you can keep looking like me. This is this making sense. So watch this. Principle number one, you got to have a kingdom in it. Oh. Uh, Let's hit Colossians 3.17 real quick. Read it in the magic verse. Let every detail in your lives, mm -hmm. word, action, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. So every marriage mm -hmm. is to be in the image and likeness of God because he created a male in his image and a female in his image that female in his image got together with a male. Um, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. That, that male got together with a female that was also in his image. And when you get in his image together, how y'all stop looking like him? So everything you say and do, in word or in deed, should be toward his image. It should look like him, should sound like him, it should reflect him. Y'all, as uh, us married people, we thought the, the, the uh, singles were getting it uh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so not only do you have kingdom image, you got to have kingdom influence. Kingdom influence. And I need you to listen up very carefully on this one. Uh, kingdom influence. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. It says, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over fish and sea, follow there over every living thing that creeps upon the earth. Now watch this. When he made Adam and Eve, created them in his image and his likeness, and they are looking like, the, like him, which we're still in the same image. He made all of us in the same image. He says, I need you to have some influence. Because if you're going to reflect my image, 
I want you to also have influence to be able to do something so that my image will be magnified. All right. The reason marriages have problems is because, watch this, the enemy is not so much interested in all your stuff like we think he is. He's actually interested in taking your influence. I'll show it to you in a minute. He's interested in instilling, killing, and destroying your influence in your marriage. The devil, Satan, did not even show up on the scene until Adam and Eve got married. He didn't show up. We don't see him nowhere until Adam and Eve got married. Y'all don't even believe this. Let's do some reading. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Somebody. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, uh -huh. and he slept. Yep. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and said thereof. Watch this. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, <coughs> he a woman, mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. It's all right there. So God the Father escorted his daughter down the aisle. Yeah. <coughs> to his son. We're at the wedding now. Watch this. Keep rolling. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of nature. Stop right there. He just kissed the bride. Yep. Wedding is over. Watch this. Therefore shall a man leave his father and uh -huh. his mother, Leaving. and shall cleave unto his wife, Leaving. and they shall be one flesh. Leaving. Now the marriage is started. <laughs> now let me show you when the marriage shows up started. Watch this. And they were both naked. Good Lord, help us. <laughs> shows up as soon as they get married. Right. <laughs> single people. Let me encourage you. Adam as a single person ain't saw no devil. Don't want to get married too soon. <laughs> you don't even know what's around the corner for you. <laughs> I ain't trying to talk you out of getting married, but don't try to get married too soon because the devil didn't even show up until they got married. Watch this. Remember, so I, I, I'm about to end on this point. We'll grab it next week. But watch this. Let me tell you the backstory of everything. Um, at this point in what now is human history, uh, in the in eternity past, the devil, Lucifer, has been kicked out of heaven. Yep. Yes, he was kicked down to a penal colony called Earth. Yep. Don't miss it. No, no. <laughs> now, he was kicked out of heaven, uh -huh. and he was kicked down to a penal colony, a prison called Earth. Yes, a trash dump wow. called Earth. My God. Then God decided, you know what? <coughs> Even though that's a trash dump, 
I'm going to produce something in the midst of a trash dump right. that's di- actually going to illuminate how powerful I am. Mm-hmm. He says, so I'm going to make a man. Right. Yes, a man is less than an angel. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. But it was an angel who was so powerful who had just got kicked out of heaven. Uh-huh. He said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create something that's less than what I created before, and I'm going to do more in that than what I was able to do in the greater, because this is going to be made in my image, in my likeness. And this time, I'm going to be right there with them so that they will always look like me. So Satan is on a penal colony. Adam comes along. Adam starts doing single stuff. Doing it at a high level. Yes, sir. Right before Adam got married, the last thing Adam did was name the animals. Yeah. All of them. Yes, sir. Watch this. Adam is rolling. He got amazing influence because. Which one of y'all named her? I did. <laughs> you can tell her what to do right now. <laughs> one reason she can tell her what to do, she named her. My God, my God. Adam had influence over everything because he named it. And when Eve came along, she joined him with that influence because he named it and now they're one. My God, my God. So Adam now as a married man is proving out God was right that he could actually do more with a lesser being than he could even with an archangel. So Adam was too influential for Satan. So Satan needed to rob him of his influence. Because what you will find in chapter 3 is when Eve ate of the fruit. And when, when she gave it to her husband, and when the penalty came down, watch this, the whole earth got cursed because of what Adam did, which meant he couldn't just tell the earth what to do no more. He lost his influence. When a marriage is off the rocks, you can't just go tell anybody about how good God is because you ain't got no influence no more. about how good God is and don't even like, you like hesitate to go home. (laughs) You already know an argument is waiting on you. It's going to meet you in the driveway and walk you all the way up to your front door. (laughs) So now you got to deal with each other And you're now not influential to actually proclaim the image and likeness of God. And you are not even thinking right, so you end up saying things that you really, well, maybe you did, but you hope you did. dominion if you always argue with each other. Rather than dominating the earth from a God perspective and rather than rather than dominating the enemy by keeping your foot on his neck, you find yourself forgetting what dominion you have because you're fighting each other. It's a bad thing. Now, I ain't never been in the military, but uh, Brother Phil, you can help me out with this. One of the worst things I believe that I've been told, I've got a lot of friends in the military, one of the worst things that happen in the military is you get friendly fired. Yeah. Yes, sir. The people on your old team start shooting at you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sweet Lord Jesus. <laughs> So we're going to stop it right there. Uh, the, the, the next one is instructions. Uh, and we're going to talk about what a, a kingdom marriage is actually supposed to do. Mm-hmm. What it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Of course, you've got to be concerned. Mm-hmm.
this is what what. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm doing a marriage uh, a wedding on um, on November third <laughs> second November second, and uh, one of the things I'm going to share with the couple during the ceremony is uh, marriage is not to be entered into, into lightly or unadvisedly. <laughs> That's the reason we do marriage counseling and we go through a ton of stuff. We do premarital and marriage counseling because. What we found out is that during the premarital, you don't know what you don't know. Right. You don't even know where to question that. <laughs> and so then when you get into it, now the cool thing about doing marriage counseling is you stuck like Chuck right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you stuck like Chuck. So then you just got to try to work it out. Got to work it out. Work it out. Work it out. All right. Thank God for you. I don't know where all y'all came from. I was looking up for a minute ago and went around in here and now the whole world of pussy, y'all. Praise God for you. Let's stand in this mess. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another expression of your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come tonight to be together to pray. You said men are always praying to faith not. So we thank you right now. You said that your house should be called a house of prayer. So we thank you for allowing us to actually live and operate in the scripture by praying. And we know that you heard us because you promised us that if we called on you, you would answer us and show us great and mighty things we didn't know. Thank you, God, for this, uh, this new teaching series, Kingdom Marriages. We pray, God, that we have said it the way you wanted us to say it. We pray now that it has, has already penetrated the hearts and minds, not just of the married people, but all people, so that we will be ready to give anyone else an answer when they need it. But also, we can apply it into our marriages and into those marriages that are on their way. Lord, we thank you right now for every heart, every mind, every body that's in this place. We pray that you will give them uncommon favor. You will actually provide godly mercy. Lord, you'll forgive us for our sin. You'll continue to do a season of monthly above all that we can ask them or imagine. Lord, you'll continue to guide our pathway. Lord, we thank you right now that as we trust you, that you'll be faithful and just to actually show us exactly what you want us to do, where you want us to be, how you want us to do it. And Lord, we thank you in advance for victory being where you take us. So we bless your holy name, God. Lord, as we leave this place and never your presence, we leave knowing that our peace, and joy awaits us at our home. Safety awaits us in our travel. And Lord, we have a big old thank you ready for you every time you do something. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.